This short presentation is about equations of motion of a mass, spring, damper system. We develop equations of motion in unloaded state, equilibrium state, and the general deflected state with coordinate transformation. This is followed by MATLAB simulation to obtain displacement and velocity profiles for different values of mass, stiffness, damping and initial conditions. We will also calculate parameters of the mass spring damper system with MATLAB. Let's start with some basic mechanics. In this diagram, we see mass with spring and dampers in an unloaded situation, so there is no load on the spring. From experience, as we know, this is quite an impossible state. Practically, we have gravity due to which the mass would be lowered. Then, we have a certain preload on the spring, let's say rho. Depending whether there is motion or not, we will also have damping in the system. For this situation, we can draw the free body diagram together with gravity. You see the gravity vector right here, so here's the gravity vector. Since we are talking about the gravity vector, we have one force which is the gravitational force. Additionally, because for the free body diagram, we cut off spring and damper, instead we have the restoring spring and the damping forces. In this free body diagram, we see that C is the spring rate and K is the damping factor. Now, we can apply Newton's law and Newton's law states that mass times acceleration must be equivalent to the dumb of all forces acting on the system. Now, we can have a closer look. As already mentioned, we have the gravity force which is m times g. We have the damping force k times rho dot, where rho is the motion coordinate. And we have the spring force which is c times rho. Obviously, both the spring force and the damping force are acting against a motion. That's why both these forces have a negative sign in front. This now finalizes our equations of motion. So, all the parts that deal with the coordinate row, whether it is rho, rho dot or rho double dot, are collected on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have the external force which is the gravity force. In fact, we are now looking at a linear ordinary differential equation. Its linear is rho, rho dot or rho double dot, are all linear. Since the rho double dot is the highest derivative of the motion coordinate, we have a second order differential equation with constant coefficients. The coefficients are constant which means that we have m as one of the constants, we have the damping factor k as a constant, and we have the spring rate c as a constant. Now, we are looking at the static state of equilibrium. If we look at the static state of equilibrium, then we will see that the coordinate rho has a certain value which is called rho zero. Since we are talking about a static state of equilibrium, rho dot and rho double dot are equal to zero. Again, we can look at the free body diagram and we will see that the components are the same as previously. But now we are looking at the static state of equilibrium, where rho dot and rho double dot are both zero. Then, we get the equation for the static state of equilibrium. It allows us to collect now for rho zero which is exactly the deformation that we see in the system for the static state of equilibrium. We will find that rho zero is equivalent to m times g which is the gravitational force divided by the spring constant c or we can have the equalness that rho zero times c is equal to m times g. Let's now have another look at the general case of deflected state to relate two coordinates and of course their transformation. One is the initial coordinate rho that we used from the state at unloaded spring. And we can introduce a new coordinate and that is the coordinate x. This coordinate x allows us to define the motion starting from the static state of equilibrium. Now, we can again draw the free body diagram and we see that we again have the gravitational force m times g. We can now express the spring force as c times the sum of x and rho zero, and the damping force is now k times x dot, because we have seen previously, as you can see here, that rho dot is equivalent to x dot. Now, we can reformulate Newton's law which still is m times x double dot, and is equal to the sum of all forces dot. In fact, this is already a little bit different to the formula that we had previously, where we replaced rho double dot by x double dot. Now, we can also introduce again the forces that are acting on the system. We have the gravitational force, we have the damping force, and we have the force from the spring. If we now collect on the left-hand side of the equation all the terms that relate to x, x dot, or x double dot, we can come up with the equation of motion. Where on the right-hand side we have the only external force which is m times g, that is the gravitational force. The equation for rho zero can be repeated, that is rho zero is equivalent to m times g which is the gravitational force divided by the spring constant c and we can introduce this formula into the equation of motion. Now, we will see that we got rid of rho zero completely. 
On the left hand side, we have just those terms dealing with x, x dot and x double dot, so this is the inertia force, this is the damping force and this is the spring force. And on the right hand side, we find that we have two addons, a positive addon and a negative addon. But they cancel each other out, because at this point we can cross out the spring rate. Then, we have just m times g plus m times g which finally ends up as zero. So, this is now a homogeneous equation of motion meaning that on the right hand side there's just zero, and on the left hand side again we just have terms that relate to x, x dot and x double dot. So, as already mentioned this is just a term that we got from the preloading of the spring in the static state of equilibrium, but finally this is also the reason why we introduced this new coordinate x. In using this coordinate x, we just have this homogeneous equation of motion. Finally, what we can say is that if the motion variable has its zero point in the static state of equilibrium, then gravity force and preload spring force cancel each other out, and we end up with a homogeneous equation of motion. The question is now how to use the new mathematical model that we have derived. This was the system that was described through our mathematical model. And of course we can use that mathematical model within MATLAB or Simulink by just programming this equation. And from here we can then start with a MATLAB file. We define the mass of the body as m. Stiffness coefficient of spring k, damping coefficient as c, time of 0 to 1 seconds in increments of 10 milliseconds. Initial conditions set for displacement x0 equals 0 0.01. Initial condition of velocity x.0 equals 0. We then define symbolic time variable t in system function. We obtain first and second derivatives and store them in dx and d2x. The important function d solve solves the differential equation m d2x plus c dx plus k times x equals 0 given the initial conditions as stated. Finally, we convert the symbolic expression or function x and x dot to MATLAB functions with handles x and x dot respectively and evaluate these functions at points of time. We can also find the maxima, the location of the maximum, time period, and both frequencies. The displacement and velocity profiles are plotted together for mass of 1000 kg, stiffness equals 25000 and damping coefficient equals 0 0.5. The second plot is for mass of 1000 kg, increased stiffness to 50000 and damping, 0 0.05 which is reduced 10 times in the previous case. These results are shown for different initial conditions. In this simulation we have increased the value of damping coefficient, and its effects can be seen. One can have more extensive analysis by looking at different values of mass, spring stiffness and damping coefficient, and also see the effects of initial conditions and could have a better comparison. Finally, what we can say is that if the motion variable has its zero point in the static state of equilibrium, then gravity force and preload spring force cancel each other out, and we end up with a homogeneous equation of motion, that is, free damped systems have their zero point at equilibrium. This ends the presentation and thanks for watching.